This video is on DNA. James Watson and Francis Crick are the two scientists that discovered the structure of DNA in the 1950s. A nucleotide is the building blocks of DNA and RNA. They consist of a phosphate, sugar, deoxyribose or ribose, and a nitrogenous base. The nitrogenous base makes up the inside of our DNA structure and the sugar and the phosphate group make up the backbone of our double helix structure. There are five nitrogenous bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Uracil replaces thymine in the RNA structure. Purines are the nitrogenous bases of adenine, guanine, and pyrimidines are the nitrogenous bases of cytosine, thymine, and uracil. And these are all five of our nitrogenous bases and their structures. The structure of DNA. DNA is a molecule made up of nucleotides that is two intertwined antiparallel strands. Antiparallel means the two strands that make up the DNA go in opposite directions of each other. Each end of the DNA molecule has a number that corresponds to the phosphate and the hydroxyl groups. There are one prime, two prime, three prime, and five prime carbons. The one prime carbon is the one that attaches to the base. The two prime carbon is what tells us the difference between the DNA and RNA. DNA will have an H group attached to it, while RNA will have an OH group attached to it. The phosphate group is attached to the five prime carbon of one nucleotide and the three prime carbon of the next nucleotide. And you can see this up here on the sugar part of the nucleotide diagram. There's what we call handedness dealing with DNA, and that is either where DNA spins to the right or to the left. Both of our DNA images on this slide show that they are right handed. And, and as you can see from the picture, the major groups occur where the backbones are far apart and the minor groups occur where they are closer together. The purine and pyrimidine bases of both strands are stacked inside our double helix and stabilized by van der Waal interactions. And you can see the two base pairs differ in the amount of hydrogen bonds where C and G have three and A and T have two. DNA is a negatively charged particle because the phosphate backbone has an oxygen atom that is negatively charged. The negative charge allows for the backbone to be hydropho hydrophilic and able to bond with water. This picture up here shows how the negative charges of the DNA backbone are surrounded by the positive charges of the salt saline buffer. Sodium is a positively charged particle, and when there is a high amount of it near a negatively charged phosphate backbone, it starts to work to neutralize the charge on our phosphate. This in turn helps prevent denaturing and un winding of DNA. But with a high salt concentration, we are able to see our strands be held more tightly together. The neutral charge makes DNA less hydrophilic and soluble in water. This image tries to show how DNA strands seems to be more neutralized now because of the high salt concentration and is now more hydrophobic and resisting all water molecules around it. The TM stands for the midpoint of thermal denaturation. This is defined as the temperature at which 50% of the double strand of DNA is changed to single strand of DNA, or where 50% of the DNA has denatured and come undone. This basically means that the more stable DNA is, the higher the TM levels will be because it takes more for the strands to denature. In this example, we will have a higher TM because, our high, because with a higher salt buffer, we will see a more neutralized DNA strand that is more tightly coiled together, making it harder for it to denature. And these are my references.